Question number three, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statements with regard to housing that, quote, we take responsibility, we need to do a better job of it, and, quote, we need to do more? The right Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister. I stand by my full statement on housing, which went on to say, to say we've done nothing in the last few years is absolutely not true. Just think of the things we've done in the last two years alone, then I listed them. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Given he has stated that the public's concerns about housing are due to his government's failure to explain its policies, how has his government's failure to explain its policies caused building materials to be more expensive, <laughs> investors to buy 80% of houses in some places, and home ownership among under 40s to plummet to just 25%? Can you explain that. So you are right on um, Prime Minister. Speaker, the member is uh, making things up, but what he might like to know, because he wouldn't want the facts to get in the way of a good story from his point of view, that we are building on its own 40 houses every working day in Auckland. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question. Order. Supp Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How has his government's failure to explain its policies caused house prices to rise at over 20 per cent a year in many places, deposit inflation to run at $500 a week, and home ownership to plummet to its worst level in 65 years? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, the member is making things up. This is quite true. That from 1986 to 2014, the last census, home ownership rates have uh, declined, but that's been across successive governments, Mr Speaker. But Mr Speaker, if you look at the government programme, which has been very extensive, of everything from releasing more land to having more people building houses, over time, those supply side will actually fix the issues just as it did in Christchurch. And if the member doesn't believe that, why would the member support now the government's policy of releasing more land? Supplementary question, Andrew Little. How has his government's failure to explain its policies caused children to live in cars and motels because there aren't enough state houses, and families in rental houses too often find them cold, mouldy and unhealthy? The un Mr right Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. the government has done a substantial amount to help uh, the less well-off, including, I might point out, uh, we're placing 134 tenants and their families into social housing every week. We're building 17 new social houses every week. We'll be the first government actually in history uh, to give people money as they move uh, into emergency accommodation. And on top of that, Mr Speaker, the government spends nearly $10 billion a year supporting the least well-off in New Zealand, including $4.4 billion on benefits, $2.4 billion on working for families, Families, 1.2 billion on the accommodation supplement, 800 million on income related rents, 277 million on hardship assistance, 143 million oh, in recovery assistance, and 340 in improving other conditions. Billion on tax Order. Suppl Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. If it's all just a failure to explain, which of his three ministers of housing has had the worst fail? Nick Smith, who says homelessness is a figment of our imagination. Paula Bennett, who announced $41 million for emergency housing and then had to admit it didn't buy a single new bed. Or Bill English, who says crisis is overstating it when home ownership is plumbing, plummeting to its worst level in 65 years. Yeah, right on, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, again, uh, the members making them all up. But one thing, one thing we can be sure of. If any one of the three of them was the leader of the opposition, they'd be polling better than 8 per cent. Supplementary. This is where you're going, Order. John. Supplementary. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, does he really think that kids living in cars and a generation shut out of home ownership is just a political problem for him to spin his way out of? The right Speaker, Prime there's Minister. been international decline in home ownership rates, but still 65% of New Zealanders own a home. There are varying reasons why, because of societal changes, some of them are different, including people living in retirement homes. But, Ms. Mr Speaker, if you look overall at the assistance that the government gives the least 
uh, well-off New Zealanders, this is the most assistance any government has given. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Doesn't he think it is just grotesque of him to talk about a $3 billion unfunded tax cut election bribe when kids are living in cars and a generation is being shut out of home ownership. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, as I said earlier, uh, the government, uh, if you look at the amount that we're spending, which is more than any other government in the history of New Zealand, is spending $10 billion a year helping the least well off. Now, Mr Speaker, um, I might point out that the issue of homelessness and people living in cars is not a new issue. And in 2008, when Michael Cullen did cut taxes, the situation was the same. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Will he promise that by the time of the election next year, the home ownership rate in New Zealand will be rising? and every child will have a warm, dry, healthy home. And if not, why is he so lacking in ambition for New Zealanders? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, right Prime uh, Prime uh, what I will promise is the government will keep delivering for New Zealanders in the way that we have, including more assistance to low-income New Zealanders than ever before. And, Mr Speaker, that includes free GP visits for under-13s, $10 billion worth of assistance to the least well-off, breakfast in all schools that want it, social workers in all low decent schools, the youth service, the young team beneficiaries. I could go on, but Mr Speaker, they are very comprehensive responses uh, to New Zealanders' needs. Order. Question number four, David Seymour.